welcome to Scatter Travel TV. We're up at our cabin today, so this is a getaway. This is the place that we get away to relax and enjoy and have some fun things. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful salmon. Look at the coating on it. It's wonderful salmon and it's done on the grill as well as other healthy things. I'm going to show you how I do my yams so that they are mashed and sweet. And then of course things from the garden and things that are healthy for you. That's about the right portion to be really healthy, although it's quite a feast. We'll see if we finish it. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy our tips from our cabin at the weekend. Okay, today we are back at the cabin again where I enjoy cooking. And today we're going to cook the salmon that Galen caught up on our Alaskan trip. He went salmon fishing, he caught this salmon. It is beautiful salmon. Look at that. That's just as fine a salmon as ever. So we're gonna start by laying it out on some aluminum foil. We're gonna cook it on the grill, but we're gonna lay it out on the aluminum foil. We're going to give it a little bit of salt. So we're gonna give it just a little bit of salt. So salt the meat. Now, here is what I do that makes salmon moist and really tasty. I'm gonna take about a teaspoon of butter and put it in a bowl, and then I'm going to melt it in the microwave. So we're gonna melt it, which will take just a minute to melt. And if we have watermelon for lunch, we're gonna have watermelon with it. If you look back at some of my videos or search, you're gonna find the one that tells you how to peel and dice a watermelon. It comes out beautiful, very easy, very fast. So if you wanna know how to do the watermelon so it's all diced and peeled the easy way without a mess, go and take a look for that video. Okay, it just takes a few seconds to melt the butter. So I've got melted butter. And with that, I'm going to take some mayonnaise. So just give you some mayonnaise. And to that, I'm gonna put about, for this much salmon, about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And you know me, when I cook, it's, it's a guesstimate. I don't love the whole measure thing, so there we go. And then to that, we're gonna add some garlic salt. So again, I'm guesstimating, so, you know, probably about a quarter teaspoon of garlic. And we're gonna mix this together. And then to that, I'm going to add some green onion. Now when I do my green onions, I leave them banded together with the rubber band, and I wash them really good, and then I cut the ends of the, you know, the, little, what are they, root ends of the white off. I cut them off and then I make these even. Now I've used this more than once, so this is another time. I have a kitchen pair of scissors that I use just for cooking. So off of the white end, I'm just going to take and just shave off just a few little bits of the onion off the white end. And then I want some green. See, it makes these wonderful little round circles of green, and I don't cut it very thick, but enough to give us some onion and some color. Mix it together really, really good. And then we just put it over the salmon. And we're just going to spread it nice and even over the salmon. Should be enough to cover it. So all the meat gets covered. And then we're going to just, and I do two layers of foil. I do one that faces out and one that faces in so that the outside and the inside are both silver. And then I'm just going to fold it together. And because I'm doing it on the grill, I've got to have two layers of the aluminum foil or we'll end up burning the fish before we're done. So the double layer helps do that. It, it uh, 
The outside is going to reflect some of the heat again so that it doesn't burn it. And I just roll the ends. So I've rolled the middle and I've rolled the ends. And I have a packet that's ready to go out on the grill. So we're going to go out to the grill now and start cooking it. These are our yams that we have that we're getting ready for dinner. I have taken them and just peeled them and then cubed them. So they're just done in little cubes so that they will cook faster. Then when you boil them, it only takes like 10 minutes for these to get ready, maybe 15 at the most. And then they're nice and soft and if you go to break into them, they'll just your fork will go right through them. And they're just really soft. So when they get nice and soft and they're ready to just be mashed, we're actually going to mash these now. You could serve them and not mash them. Uh, if I don't mash them, I then put some butter on them, some salt, and sometimes a little bit of brown sugar. But today we're going to mash them in kind of a different way. All right, then we want to drain them. Get them all drained and bring them back over. I left just a tiny bit of water in the bottom. Don't want too much, just a little, little bit. A couple of tablespoons, maybe. There we go. So get them drained. And you can use one of those. You can use a drainer and dump them in a drainer back and forth. Or you could uh, put like a cover over the pan that holds the water back. Just depends. I guess I, I'm pretty quick at just draining them without it falling, them falling out of the pan. So... Now they're drained, now we're going to mash them. I wished I had one of those old fashioned potato mashers. Those are just really fun. But instead today I'm just going to use, again I'm at the cabin so some of the equipment we have is older. So I'm just gonna use one of these little hand mixer things. And when I say hand mixer, I mean hand mixer. You do it by hand, you turn the little crank and it mixes it. All right, so we've got this, and I usually just go around and I take it and I just mash. I use it just to mash them up a bit so we can get them started. And then I'm going to put some butter in it. Again, about a teaspoon of butter. These are just, they're really good if you have butter. You have to have butter. And then I'm going to use some honey because it's healthier for you. Get a fairly high grade honey if you can and it only takes a maybe a quarter teaspoon of honey for that much because the honey is really strong it's really sweet it doesn't take long for that to and then like i said here's the little hand crank can you see these, how the old hand crank you we used to work you just take it and i don't know if you're old enough you'll remember these if not you won't if not, use an electric one. You can go back and be modern and use an electric one. But these are just kind of fun. It's just going to mash them up and make them nice and smooth. So they're nice and creamy. Here we are. Creamy mashed sweet potatoes made with butter and honey. Give it a try. It's kind of fun. You might actually, some people put salt on it. I don't. Have some fun with it. Okay, we're out at the grill. We warmed it up. One of the keys is, is you need to warm the grill up to temperature before you actually put the fish on so that it's nice and hot. So you'll heat your grill up, put your fish on it like this. Now, one of the reasons why I'm cooking it on the grill is because to cook it in the house, it gets that kind of cooking fish smell. And I don't like that. I love fish. I don't like the smell of it cooking, all impermeating my whole house. So if you put it on the grill, then that smell stays outside. So you should put it on the grill. It's about 10 minutes per side on that size of fish. We've laid them flat, so it's not any thicker than a normal fish would be. So about 10 minutes per side. I just use a little thing like that. Just flip it over. You can see that, see how it's all puffy up in there? It's kind of, it's cooking and the heat's inside. So there we go. And we're going to leave it another 10 minutes. And then our fish will be ready to eat. I can't wait to show it to you. There we go. Okay, here we are. Should be done. Look at how puffy it is. Look at that. Look at all of the heat in there. 
It's all Jesus. puffy, and I can hear it just sizzling and sizzling away in there. I use a couple of forks to open it so I don't have to touch it. You can do it how you want. You can use an oven mitt. I just use forks. That's why you watch these, is to see what the weird things are I do, right? And there we have it. Look at that. And look how flaky and wonderful that is. Oh, that is going to be amazing. <clears throat> so I just need to get it loosened up off of the, either the Jump skin or the, the skin. thing. I just take it off the, and get under the skin with the spatula. And look at that. Do you love these plates? Look at these plates. These plates are so old. But up at the cabin, we just use our old dishes and our old plates. Some things here are 50, 60 years old. We have a great time with it. And then here's another one ready to go. See if we can get that one loosened up a little bit under the edge of it. Because we don't want the skin. And look at that beautiful fish. Remember, we're leaving the smell outside. So now we can just wrap it up so that the fish smells stay inside and then we'll just grab it with our tongs and go throw it away and our fish is ready to eat isn't it great you'll want to be doing salmon next on your grill now we're having the salmon but some people even though it has kind of a coating on it a sauce on it some people me included like to have some kind of a flavoring on the fish. So lemon is probably the most popular for salmon to just squeeze out some lemon on the fish. The lemon will give you just a little bit of tartness to it. Lemon's a really good addition for fish. So that's one choice. So we'll have that as a choice. The other choice, and we got up here to our cabin and every our favorite thing on fish is tartar sauce. Well, we got up here and we have no tartar sauce, so what do we do? I'm going to just show you how I make my own homemade tartar sauce really quickly. I take mayonnaise and I just add some mayonnaise. We're just going to make a little bit here. I put just a little bit of garlic salt in it, not much. And the main ingredient that makes it taste like tartar sauce, and you need to shake it up first, is it's a dill relish. I've done it with sweet relish as well, but quite a bit of it, and then just a touch, and I do mean a touch because it's really strong, just a touch of the horseradish sauce. And then just mix it up. And just depending on how much of the pickle taste you want, uh, will depend on how much of the relish you put in. If you're not a dill person, add some. And let's see what it tastes like. Yep, really good. Now, I would add more dill sauce because I happen to like it more dill. So you can see I put in quite a bit of the relish because that's my favorite part. Okay, we're going to try this again. Mmm. That's better. That's really good. Now there's some homemade, quick and easy tartar sauce. Give it a try and see if you like it. I think you will. Yummy, yummy. We're ready to eat. So thanks for joining us today at Scatter Travel TV. Come take a look at our website and see what we have to offer you. We have places that you can book trips. We have some great discounts on our booking site you'll automatically get a $15 coupon by coming to our site. So come in and take a look at our booking site at www.scattertravel.tv and enjoy your vacations as much as I enjoy mine.